Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to Sully's Models. Uh, in this video, we're going to be doing a kit review on the Revell uh, 130 Seconds uh, Mark II Spitfire. So, uh, before we go into uh, the kit review, I'm going to quickly tell you uh, the plan uh, for this one. Um, I didn't want to do uh, standard camouflage for this because I've, I've basically done this once before uh, on a 48th kit Mark I. Um, I don't really like repeating uh, what I've already done before. So, while I was doing a bit of research and trying to find something uh, slightly different, originally what I was going to do uh, was try and do a PR version. Um, but I was struggling to find uh, sort of upgrades and I was going to sort of try and budget together myself. Uh, but then I came across a uh, Mark V uh, conversion. Uh, which basically is only um, uh, the cannon and uh, the fairings to go on the wing um, which is designed for this kit in particular um, so it seems quite uh, easy and straightforward um, just a few panels that needs removing and maybe a bit of um, rescribing um, so anyway we'll get to that into uh, a later video um, so we'll uh, we'll take a look at the kit itself and uh, See how that goes. Okay then, so here are a part and some instructions. Uh, so we'll, we'll, uh, what we'll do is we'll go through the instructions first. Get the uh, more boring part out of the way. So um, yeah, pretty much, uh, it's pretty much a standard um, Revell um, instructions. Uh, first page will have all your uh, parts that are in the kit or number date so you can use that as a reference um, and of course to start the build there the cockpit um, again there's always very I like about one of the things like a Ravel is again same as the Tamiya um, you know very well uh, laid out uh, diagrams uh, nice and bold uh, so there's no real um, issue with trying to you know uh, see where the parts go it's quite you know well laid out and like, like, like some of the old ones um, where I, I, I can remember some of them were terrible and you struggled to you know see where parts were going but these are a lot more bolder um, you know this is not one of the up-to-date ones but it's um, a fairly modern one um, so yes yeah, so um, you know uh, there's not really many parts most of the parts are as you can see, lock on this page are mainly in the cockpit, so majority of which you will not see. Uh, so, um, but yeah, there's not really much. I mean, there's not really much need for customization really on this. Um, you know, obviously you can have wheels up. Uh, oh no, can you have wheels up? I'm saying wheels up. I'm wheels down is the word I was looking for. Um, I oh, don't know what you can. Uh, I wasn't doing that anyway, but. Uh, there you go, uh, there's no option there. Not saying you can't do that, you might be able to do that. Um, uh, just have to see how the panels fit and that, uh, the, the undercarriage doors fit into the wheel wells, because sometimes when they're made like this, I've noticed that um, they don't really fit. Uh, so I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, but you can have the option of the door up or down. So there's your first first and pretty much only option, apart from the uh, canopy uh, being open or closed. Uh, and that's really about it. Uh, <laughs> there's not really much of an option there uh, for anything. Uh, but of course you've got uh, two uh, camo schemes. I said the two camo, two aircraft schemes, you should say they're both the same colour. Um, one from uh, number 19 squadron. Uh, which I believe, yeah, if you remember right, is the first squadron to have uh, Spitfires. And number 65 uh, squadron. So, um, yep, two choices there. Uh, <laughs> again, uh, not much there, but uh, there you go. Uh, you've got two, uh, two options with uh, airframe. Um, and that's the instructions. Uh, quickly do the decals, I can just see them. Um, so standard, you know, aircraft registration, rain doors, uh, walkway markings, trestle markings, uh, instruments. Uh, very rarely uh, you get these. These are the 
uh, dope patches uh, to go over the gun ports. So you don't usually see them uh, in kits. Um, usually you don't bother or you make your own. Uh, usually you can use actually use um, a bit of masking tape really to be fair for that. Um, anyway, uh, but yeah, um, I think I said instrument panel, but if I didn't, instrument panel. Uh, so yeah, uh, quite simple uh, decals because again you've only got two options to, to really go for. Um, I'll get back onto markings in a moment. Uh, the kit itself is pretty uh, simple. Uh, so the detailing on it is uh, quite exceptional actually, uh, as you probably I'm sure you can see there. Oh, the lighting's a bit bad, sorry. Um, but yeah, everything is uh, riveted, uh, which again, all the kits I've been involved with uh, generally don't have this, but then again, I'm usually working with 48, um, which generally don't have that sort of level of detail. Small bit of detail on the interior uh, wall there. What have we got? Um, we'll get some of the interior parts. Whoops. Um, well, well, uh, sorry, undercarriage doors even, uh, the exhausts, um, chin cover there, I think that's part of the oil radiator and fil uh, front filter, uh, air intake even for the super. Um, the cockpit is actually um, very well, the uh, instrument panel, I'm going to get my words out today, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, instrument detail is uh, very good. You've even got the uh, rest for the compass, which again is something you don't usually see. Um, but again, uh, ailerons, very well detailed as well. Uh, one of the uh, intakes there, radiators. Small bit of flash in there. I think that's actually the only bit and the biggest bit I've seen so far at a glance. Um, you've got the uh, what is it? It's like a, not resin. Uh, it's a moulded seat. Uh, it's made up of about five or six parts instead of the uh, aluminium seats that they used to use originally. Uh, they moved away from that because it was costing too much money. Um, tile plane. Again, rudders, elevators, wing tips. They're in two parts. Uh, but very, very, um, it's very nice actually. Material wall. So yeah, um, they're looking pretty nice. The main wing detail as well is just as good. Got the six gun ports there. Gun bay, sorry. Ports on the top. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, nice there. You've they've even put in uh, the framework if you want to have your uh, flaps down. I'm not going to do this, but if I did, and I'd probably recommend it if you're up to that sort of uh, confidence of getting a brass part uh, for that, it would look six times better. I've seen some bits for these um, be way better um, in the long run, um, I think. The lower wing half, again, very nicely detailed. Uh, so as we've got to this part, I will tell you actually what I'm going to be doing with this. Uh, I'm modifying it slightly, as you can see by some of the drawings there. I'm making this in from a Mark II to a Mark V. Now, it's going to be slightly off. Some of the panels aren't going to be right. Uh, but this upgrade kit is for this kit to make it from Mark II to a Mark V. Now, there are, there's a few panels that are going to be uh, wrong. I'm not going to try and correct them. Um, partly because most of it's on the underwing and as you know you don't usually see that anyway um, when it's sat up uh, properly so I, as you can see I've marked out uh, one of the gun ports needs to be blanked off that one needs to be for the cannon so I'll have to see how that fits when we get round to that marking off this gun port um, ejection slip and panel there so that's going to be getting gone I've also done uh, the same for the top wing, which cannon blank off that gun port, remove that panel, 
uh, there and there's also a fairing that has to go there and on the bottom there. The kit I'm using is from AML. Um, so it's resin parts. I've got the instructions, I'll quickly show you these. And see what I've got to do. Um, so it shows you all the panels that should be on there for a uh, Mark, actual Mark V. And I know that top dome there actually needs to probably have some panel lines scribed into it because that uh, comes away separate to the rest of the fairing. Uh, technically, there's some under um, landing lights that are there. And so these are the panels that will be missing. So I'm not going to worry too much about those. But uh, so those are the bottom uh, fairings. And that's the top one. Oh, no, it's already scribed in. I never noticed that before. So that saves me a bit of time. Uh, so we'd have to still scribe in the rest of the panel, I think. Uh, but at first glance, it's all looking quite good. And one of the gun parrels which has got a bit of a, I don't know where you can see that on there. Uh, it's got a bit of perforation in there, so that's nice. So what I've got to do is try and get this to sort of seamlessly fit in uh, with the leading edge of the wing. So of course that means I am not using the markings that are in the kit. I will be basically masking these out uh, using Montex um, markings. Now these are actually mask uh, markings. I've just noticed that it says for Hasegawi, they shouldn't actually make all that much of a difference to be honest with you. Um, because it says these are all masks. Uh, so the roundels and the registration uh, and the aircraft prefix are gonna be um, basically painted on as well as the tail marking. That be where the problem could potentially be. Uh, but generally Hasegawi and uh, Ravel are quite close together even though I know on the website they said it was for and when I ordered it was for the Revell. So, but I'm going to choose that. I've choose this one at the top from a Polish squadron. And the reason being is because this interesting uh, marking at the front. So it's green and gray uh, camo, yellow leading edge, and these white stripes, which are also across the tail plane as well. So, We'll see how that turns out, but I, I thought I'd go for this one because it's um, it, it's something a bit different, um, mainly. Uh, so yeah, um, so we'll see how that goes, uh, and in the next video we will uh, make a start and actually making this look like a Mark V Spitfire. So there you go, guys. Uh, there's the kit. Um, it's a pretty decent kit. Looks really really nice. Um, bit of work's going to be need to uh, done to it because uh, I'm quite confident uh, there's quite a lot of rivet uh, panels there that shouldn't be there. So um, anyway, um, thanks very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, put bell notifications on because uh, obviously the next video is going to be uh, building it and we'll be looking at the cockpit. So again, thanks guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.